In this short video, I'm going to talk about an active scale technology called DDP. DDP is Active Scale's Intelligent Dynamic Data Placement Logic. For an object storage system to seamlessly scale into the dozens of petabytes and last for generations, just how data is placed on the underlying storage becomes critical. But before we can talk about DDP, we need to do a quick review on how data is placed in an active scale system. When a file comes into an active scale system, it is not simply placed as an object. It goes through an encoding process, and the result of that encoding process is an erasure encoded object, in this case with 15 parts. And this is where DDP comes in. We want to minimize the impact of hardware failures, avoid creating I.O. hotspots, so we need to really be intelligent when it comes to determining exactly where to place these object parts. On our website, there's an in-depth video on DDP and how it differentiates from other data placement algorithms. So I encourage you to take a look at that as well. Let's drill down a bit into DDP. Well, it was designed specifically for object storage and the extreme number of objects that need to be managed. Under the covers in an active scale system, there is a distributed file system. And each disk in that distributed file system is considered an individual storage unit, or block store. These block stores have attributes, and data can be placed on any block store based on storage policy and the block store attributes. Let's look at some of these attributes. A block store has an ID. A block store has a location. In this case, that block store is in data center one. We know the rack that block store is in, rack two in this case. We know the storage enclosure that block store is in. We know the sled and the slot. But there's more attributes here. We know the capacity of that block store. And of that capacity, how much is available? We want to maintain an even distribution of data across all block stores, so we need to make sure the block stores are filling up somewhat uniformly. We know if the block store is online. A block store can be offline for various reasons. It doesn't necessarily mean a failure. But to write to that block store, we need it to be online. We also know the demand on that block store. In this example, the block store has a demand of 13%. What this means is that the block store is participating in I.O. 13% of the time. The reason this is important is because we want to avoid creating I.O. hotspots. So quick review. Every block store is an independent storage unit. Every block store has a set of attributes. And DDP uses those attributes to determine the most ideal location for object parts. Now let's step through the logic. A file comes into active scale. The file gets erasure encoded, in this case into 15 parts. Let's just take a look at one of these parts. Well, storage policy will tell us the data center. It will also tell us the preferred rack, and in some cases, the most preferred storage enclosure. Inside that storage enclosure, there is some number of block stores. So how does DDP decide the most preferred block store for this object part? In this example, we have 25 block stores to choose from. In other words, we have 25 block stores in our selection set. We need the block store to be online, so we take a look at the attributes, and from our selection set, we filter out any block stores that are not online. We want an even distribution, so we set a capacity threshold, 50% in this case. What we want are block stores that have more than 50% available capacity. Those that don't get filtered out of the selection set. We need to avoid I.O. hotspots, so we take a look at the block store demand. In this case, a threshold is set to 20%, so we're going to consider only block stores with an I.O. demand of less than 20%. We take a look at the attributes. Those block stores that don't meet the demand threshold are filtered out of the selection set. Now, any one of the remaining block stores is a valid storage location for this object part, so we can just randomly select one. In this case, 
we selected the block store with ID HDD12. Keep in mind the demand threshold and capacity thresholds are dynamically assigned. They will change based on overall system resource availability. But the takeaway here is that there is logic in place to ensure an even distribution across storage and I.O. resources. And this is absolutely key when it comes to scaling. If the placement logic doesn't just naturally give preference to more available or less used resources, you get I.O. hotspots and storage bottlenecks. The only way to deal with those situations is what is called a rebalance. A rebalance is the rewriting of data from one storage resource to another. And when we talk about petabytes of data, a rebalance becomes a huge consumer of time and I.O. resources. So in summary, DDP can be defined as a weighted variable selection algorithm. The algorithm accommodates failed or offline hardware. It gives preference to block stores with a higher available capacity to ensure an even distribution of data and to minimize storage bottlenecks. And block stores with a lower I.O. demand are preferred to avoid I.O. hotspots. For more information on DDP and to view an in-depth video on how it differentiates from other data placement strategies, visit our website.